Welcome to Talking About. I'm JC Alvarez. I'm John Griffith. And well, you know, the, Hollywood is changing so much. Mm -hmm. Just the, the, the fabric of filmmaking is, is changing. So many independent filmmakers are actually getting on the scene and really impacting the way we look at entertainment and just really creating some amazing content. And we're so happy to be joined by two of those forerunners, Max Reiser, okay. how are you, and Sal Bardo. Hey Welcome. Hi. Thank you for being Thank you us. for coming. Thank you guys for having us. Oh, absolutely. Us. Absolutely. As independent filmmakers, it's it's um, it's always a joy to see the people taking the initiative to create their art and really put their art um, on the forefront. I want to begin with a project that you guys currently have going out there. It's a film called Chaser, which is which is really fantastic and really interesting. It's a short film. Uh, you guys did it independently, all on your own. How was that process uh, different from, let, let's say, you know, anyone who's going out there to make a, a studio film? Well, I think, <laughs> first of all, the, the uh, digital revolution has really made things a lot different. So right. um, for us, it was really about um, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, which is basically going online and, and asking people to pitch in and contribute to the film. Um, and they sort of become a little bit a part of the film and they become invested in the project that you're making. So it's a good way to, to get people involved in what you're doing and it's a lot different from you know, the studio system where you would get financing from a big studio or even an independent uh, production company. Um, but I think that there's a, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for people to, to make movies who might not have been able to do it in the past. So. And as someone who's, who's seen the film, the short film, uh, Chasers, a, it's a really controversial, really delicate subject right. matter because it deals with something that um, happens, uh, you know, even though we deal with it, the, the character you play in the film, Max, is, is, is a gay man um, who's sort of like in a quandary because he's, he's putting himself in risky situations, uh, practicing unsafe sex um, in, a, in a culture where, you know, we, we're, still, we're still struggling with, with HIV and AIDS. And um, he's almost doing it deliberately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, um, bug chasers, by definitions, are uh, people who are actively seeking out the HIV virus. Now, for me, chaser has always been chaser question mark. Does this character, would he consider himself a chaser or not? The, what was interesting to me was to uh, begin to explore why he was doing what he was doing and what the reasons for that could have been. And it's, and it's so well done within the capacity of this short film. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Um, it's it is something that's that's because um, I actually when I was when I was researching a bit of the mm. film, um, this bug chaser. Uh, it's been around for a year. It's been around for years. It's but been around for but years. But I mean, it's been around since they were before meds. Absolutely, and also what I found was kind of shocking is it doesn't just extend exclusively to the gay community. There are, there are heterosexual men who have put themselves at risk with uh, prostitutes sure. in the same fashion, as well as women who have a lot of unprotected sex. Yeah. Yeah. The process of, of creating the film, um, what, what fed first? Sal, were you attracted to the, the project from the story standpoint? Did Max come with, to you with, with, uh, with, with the project? Yeah, well, we had actually, my first short film uh, from two years ago called Requited, uh, Max was one of the lead actors in that. So we had met and kept in touch and became friends. And, uh, you know, I think at one point we were talking about, you know, what are we doing in the future? And Max had, had mentioned a, a larger project about sex addiction. And one of the topics was bug chasing, which was something that I was, um, I don't want to say fascinated, but I was definitely intrigued by the topic, having encountered uh, people in, in New York who were, uh, who were bug chasers and seeking out the HIV virus. So we talked about, you know, making a film together about it. So we sat down and talked about what kind of person would this be and what angle did we want to approach the topic from. And I think really quickly we both realized that we were both uh, equally disturbed by this and and uh, wanting to to do something about it to you know start a dialogue about um, a topic that we discovered during finance during fundraising that a lot of people in the gay community don't really want to talk about so mm -hmm. it sort of fueled us and and made us uh, realize it was something we definitely wanted to do even though there were some risks and especially for Max as an actor. Um, and myself as a filmmaker is this something that would upset people to the point where they wouldn't want to see our work. Right. So Which we have a scene. Yes, uh, is there any particular setup that we need for it? Uh, well, this is a scene um, where Max, he's playing a, uh, the lead character uh, named Zach, and Zach has decided to go to uh, a bareback sex party. So this is uh, him arriving um, at the party. Yeah. Great, now let's take a look. <laughs> Hi. 
Do you have the password? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, can I see your invite? Oh. I'm in. Zach. Make yourself at home. Zach, drinks are in the kitchen. Just help yourself. Thanks. Oh, hey. Um, no condoms. It's rude. I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> okay. That's, uh... <laughs> well, the Chaser has actually a lot of... Uh, you really get involved in this, invested in this character and, and involved in his process um, because it, it really is emotional um, to sort of like see the behavior that he, that he is engaging in. Um, did you as, a, as an actor, when you're researching it, was there anything that you learned about Bug Chasers that you, was really surprising to you about the process? Uh, not really surprising to me. There's a lot of really good, well, there's one in particular great documentary about um, Bug chasers, and if you actually Google it or YouTube bug chasing, you'll find a lot of footage uh, about it. Uh, the whole thing to me is is kind of surprising and and disturbing. I didn't I didn't per se learn anything new uh, in the process of researching, but through the interviews and the researching, I did find that there were just so many different reasons why people did this. That I found that some people weren't even quite aware of what they were doing, and like I said, would never define themselves as a chaser, and yet there they are exposing themselves to the virus. So that, that's really what became the most fascinating to me, the psychology around these people who are exposing themselves and why, why that would be. I, do, I, I personally feel like I learned uh, a lot about it. Um, going into it, it was just sort of, uh, I think on my part at least, there a lot of judgment. Of, you know, why would you, A, want to do this to yourself, and B, you know, you're, you're representing a community, whether you like it or not. And I think um, you know, that was something that I went into it, in, it with that frame of mind. And in, during the process, you know, we, we talked a lot about what the motivations were. And instead of, you know, making a public service announcement, we really wanted to, you know, just take one character, mm -hmm. and it was a slice of life, and just say, this is happening, and, and maybe try to understand why someone would want to do it. And for me, uh, making a film, uh, making films in general, I like to make films about topics that I don't really understand. So it's a way for me to sort of explore an issue and try to come to grips with it. And, I, and in, in that sense, I think I felt like I, I wrapped my head around you know, this character, at least, about you know, his alienation from his culture and his family, and a little bit of understanding about why he might want to go down this path. What's also really great about the film is short films sometimes feel like they should be the stepping stone of a larger project. Mm -hmm. And this film encapsulates the journey, uh, which, is, which is really, really fantastic not to both of you as, as filmmakers, that you were able really to give us an entire narrative within the capacity of a, of a short film. You've been doing a lot of projects lately. You've been, you've been, you've been off Broadway. You've been working on a, on a significant amount of things, a lot of independent film projects. Yeah. Um, is this like one of, the more, one of the more challenging roles you've had, or in the scheme of all the characters you've played, it's, uh, it just keeps keeps getting better. Yeah, no, I mean, by far the most exciting character I've had to explore uh, and delve into. Uh, we're both somewhat hoping that somebody wants to turn it into a feature so we get to explore and delve further into it. Um, but yeah, no, it was, you know, I, I learned about um, the Russian roulette of gay sex mm -hmm. when I was 18 living in Amsterdam. And I've always been so fascinated about why somebody would take that risk, like how the, the ultimate the ult ultimate orgasm, like what is that worth to these mm. people that are risking their lives, especially, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so it was really, really, really awesome to be able to delve into this character. We, we made him a Jewish character, and I'm, I'm Jewish, so it was interesting to explore the religious aspect of that. Um, it was also very important to me that he was a high school teacher. Um, it's just interesting to, to take this person who is around children. Right, there's a lot of juxtaposition <laughs> to his life. and. Right. And uh, what he's experiencing, which which is also quite shocking. Right. Uh, but uh, but can is so identifiable. Mm. You know, there, so many of us here in New York City know people. Right. And, well, we've we've talked on and off camera mm -hmm. that just that just breaking from the topic a little bit. People making informed decisions about yeah. their own sexual health. Right. Right. Absolutely. Because we are ultimately responsible for for our own day to days. Absolutely. And uh, and also, um, Sal, this is your film requited, correct? Yes, is, uh, is starring Max, of course. 
Um, yeah, it was my <laughs> first film, and it, this is uh, Guest House Films put out this great compilation of uh, six gay shorts um, about love. Uh, it's part of a series. The first one was Black Briefs. This one's Blue Briefs, which is more romantic and about loss and love. Um, and not, not about beating each other up. It's no, darn. No, no. <laughs> these are these are all really. Th these are some great. Uh, there's a there's a film from the UK that uh, we once. Oh, I think it's called the We Once Were Tied, which which is my favorite on there. And it's a really great collection, and it's um, it's available on Amazon. You can stream it. You can buy the DVD, hmm. and um, you'll be able to see Max as well as Christopher Schramm, who's on the cover there. Um, you'll be able to see them in their briefs. And he's amazing in the film. Christopher, yeah, he's, he's, great. he's really great, Truly. and they're both great in it. And um, yeah, that was my first film, so it was really great to have that kind of exposure. And we were talking before the show about um, independent filmmaking and what the you know what the avenues for distribution are. And for short film, there really aren't a lot. But right. it's possible to get your film out on DVD, and there's obviously more independent. Right. I, more I independent love ways. the I love the compilation, compilation through Schwartz because yep. yeah. You don't see them. You don't see them paired yeah. with with larger films anymore. Yeah, and it, it's, that's true. It's, yeah. it's yeah. tough to get it to get it out there. I think the last time I really saw a short paired with a feature was as a child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they do it at festivals a lot, but right. if if you go to the movies today, they definitely you know it's all commercials and trailers. So there's no way that you would really be exposed to short films. Now, certainly the the, the projects that we're that we're discussing are gay themed. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys comfortable with with creating sort of like I don't want to call gay films a, a niche or a genre-specific market. Uh, certainly our stories are very important to tell uh, those within the gay community. As an out gay actor, it, is, it, is it just because these are the projects that you've been currently working on? Because I, you know, I, I know that you play all kinds of roles. Right, right. Um, for, for me, it's really about the project, whether it's gay or not gay. Um, it's really, really just about the project. I just turned down a film because I felt like it was very, very, very sexual. About every five pages, there was a sex scene. And granted, it's a gay film, and granted, gay audiences will like that. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, porn and horror does the best. Right, right. Um, but to me, it didn't really add to the project, and it sort of like it made it, it, made it a little less classy. Um, so I said, no, I don't think it's needed. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to explore any project that I'm passionate about, which Chaser I was yeah. obviously very passionate about. Mm. And, and certainly, there's, there's a huge market. I mean, Bear City which just had such a the successful sequel. Right. I haven't seen it yet. So don't oh, it's spoilers, fantastic. <laughs> I, it, it's, you know, there really is, and, and it's not hypersexual. It's, a, it's right. legitimately a great comedic film where the characters just happen to be gay characters. Right. And it, it's and been I, so well received. And it's not stereotypic ones either. Exactly, sure, yeah. So it's yeah. A, definite, a different slice of life that, that you don't always get to see, uh, which is what, what um, this project is. It's a Absolutely. different slice of life that you don't always get to right. see. And so, what what attracted you to sort of the to take on these these projects from the directing point of view? Is it because they are those slice of life sort of like? Yeah, I mean, I well, I write my own stuff, so I tend to write about you know they say write what you know, and um, in my case, it's write what I know and write what I want to know, so things I want to understand. Um, I think you know I was recently uh, my one of my last films was at Outfest in L.A. last summer, and one of the conversations in one of the panels was. You know, as filmmakers, are we gay filmmakers? You know, do we want to make just gay films, or mm -hmm. what is our what is our goal? Um, you know, and I think you just want to make good movies. And and for me, it doesn't matter what the characters are. I happen to write my own films, so they tend to be more LGBT oriented. Uh, my, I just finished my first feature uh, screenplay, and that is technically a gay film, but all of the main characters are heterosexual. So I'm moving in that direction. And I can, you know, I have an idea for a straight mainstream romantic comedy stuff like that so I think you just want to tell good stories with good characters yeah. Yeah. and work with good people as an artist yeah, yeah. yeah. and work yeah. with good people so I think if you know Max had come to me with an idea about you know a straight guy in a similar situation I think we would have still made the film yeah totally yeah. My, my next feature is also there's nothing gay and there's virtually no sex at all in 120 pages <laughs> um, which is <laughs> unusual <laughs> you sound disappointed <laughs> I, secretly I'm a little disappointed <laughs> It's like, uh, who is, um, I don't think I've seen a Charlie David film where you don't see his ass. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Granted, well, it's nice. But well, <laughs> sure, absolutely. I, I, I really appreciate what, what you said about uh, not only doing what you know, because I think as an artist, it, that's significantly important, because that also also starts to create a sort of benchmark for, for all of your work. It, absolutely. it raises that stake. And, uh, and Chaser is a really, really good film. Thank it's, you. It's, uh, it's uh, so beautifully made, and, and the quality of it. Um, that I can't help but imagine that, you know, with the success that it's had and how well received it's been, 
um, that would you be would it be unattractive to you to ha to work with a large studio because you know studios have such a huge demand and and request of their filmmakers yep. would that process turn you guys off as independent filmmakers no I think I mean uh, we want to make good films and to make good films you need resources and you know a, a studio the benefits with the studio is that they have a lot of money or at least more than we do mm. um, so if anyone wanted to make a feature of Chaser or, or you know, my next film is a feature, I mean, I would definitely partner with a larger studio company. Uh, I don't think the films I'm making right now are necessarily Hollywood blockbuster type movies, but I do think that there are you know, independent financiers who have you know, resources that they're, they're looking to put into films. So um, I, I think whatever door is open, I think we're willing to yeah. uh, open and, and, and certainly the palette and the, has expanded. There's so many great places for you to showcase your films. Absolutely. Uh, Netflix is a great yes. place. And they're, yeah. doing, they're doing more and more with independent. Yep. Yeah, Netflix and iTunes and yeah. Yeah, so, so there is an avenue and there is an audience for, for these, these fantastic films. Where can we let people know more about Chaser? Uh, well, our Facebook page is the best place, uh, facebook.com backslash uh, Chaser Film. Um, and uh, I think if you, if you guys play the trailer, there's also the URL at the end there. Um, and uh, that's primarily where we communicate with people who have uh, supported the film yeah. financially and otherwise. So yeah, all of our screenings and festival news and all that stuff is posted there. Yeah. Has it been making the rounds during festivals? Well, we just, we just we have just been spinning it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's for 2013, so those festivals are coming up and we haven't heard a whole lot yet. Um, but hopefully, you know, in the next few months, it'll start playing around the country as long as people aren't upset and alienated by it. <laughs> well, I, 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 think, I think sometimes that those make the best films, the ones that really right. you know, grab you and, and, and get you And get, get you a little bit out of your comfort yeah. zone. Yeah, we hope to just, we hope that it does play at festivals, and, and LGBT festivals specifically, because we do, we do think it will start a conversation you know, with the people at the festivals, as well as people who come to the festivals when they leave and go home. We want people to really think about you know, our community and, and yeah, look, it certainly wasn't an easy film to make, and it certainly wasn't an easy topic to explore. Yeah. So we do, I mean, the, the reason we both made this film was to get people to see it and to start the dialogue. So we hope we get as much exposure as possible, because that was the intention. Right. right. Entertain, uh, inform, open a dialogue. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what the best art does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule. So thank you for having us. It's awesome. great. Okay, so <laughs> uh, the, I'm not the looking at the back. People think I'm looking at the back. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wrap the segment with a look at the trailer. But the website again? It's uh, facebookcom backslash chaser film. Okay, and let's take a look at the trailer. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> the urge for destruction is also a creative one. He wants something, but he's afraid to act. <laughs> 